Good evening, Draftaholics, and welcome to Draft Punks. I'm Sam. And I'm Adrian, and this is your pre-release and draft guide for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Okay. Before we get started, we need to tackle the pack contents for this set, because it's a little crazy and frankly kind of hard to understand. Basically, there's four to five different sets included in these boosters. Let us explain. So, this is the main Outlaws of Thunder Junction set symbol. That's the main set, and predominantly what we're going to be talking about today. Easy. This is the big symbol. Which is for the big score set. This was originally planned to be an Aftermath mini set to come out following Outlaws. But when March of the Machine Aftermath flopped harder than a Roland Emmerich movie in 2023, Wizards decided to just jam it into the main set without even changing the set symbol. So here we are. All of the big score cards are mythic rares. Although that doesn't really mean anything about their actual rarity, they show up in around 18% of boosters. Importantly, only regular Outlaws of Thunder Junction and Big Score cards are standard legal. The following are not. This is the special guest symbol, which we also had in Murders at Carlot Manor. These are 10 reprints of popular cards done in a fancy style with thematic art, which in this set basically means cowboy hats. These are quite rare. These only show up in about 1.5% of packs. And this is the OTP symbol which for some reason stands for breaking news, not Outlaws of Thunder Punction, but whatever. This is a set of 65 reprints done in a fancy newspaper style that all commit a crime. More on that in the mechanic section later. They come in uncommon, rare, and mythic, and there is a dedicated slot for these cards in every play booster. Finally, this is the OTC symbol. This is the associated commander set for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. These are not in play boosters, which are what we use for the pre-release and draft. Thank God. So here is a summary of what you'll find in each play booster. Six commons, three uncommons, one rare or mythic rare. These are our regular slots. 20% of the time, one of the commons will be from the list, which will be either a big score or a special guest card, with big score being around 10 times more common. Then there's a bonus wildcard slot that can contain any rarity. The booster fun that's mentioned here basically means a variety of cool treatments and frames, not any new cards. Trying to understand this, however, is the opposite of fun. Then there's a dedicated breaking news slot. They're calling these versions borderless, and these are what appear in the play boosters. There's also these, which are not called borderless, but they only appear in the collector boosters, so we don't need to worry about them. Seriously, what the hell, what's he, man? Finally, there's a foil slot just like we're used to, and a land slot. That land slot will have a tapped jewel around about 50% of the time. We'll talk about that later in the video. Okay, so let's wrap all this up, and then we'll never talk about this again. OTJ is the main set, the thing that we all care about. Big Score is the aftermath set, and this shows up in around 18.5% of the boosters. Special Guest is the super fancy reprints, and these show up in around 1.5% of boosters. Breaking News is the newspaper treatment reprints, and these all have a dedicated slot in the play boosters. And finally, Commander Cards on the OTC set do not show up in any of the play boosters, thankfully, but they will be in collector boosters. The headliner mechanic for Outlaws of Thunder Junction, much like Colonial America, is committing crime. To commit a crime in a game of Thunder Junction Limited, you need to do one of the following. Steal your opponent's foiled out Tron deck while they're not looking. Beat them over the head with the latest edition of Gloomhaven. Or call your opponent a- <laughs> uh, After a visit from the Pinkertons, the Draft Punks have been advised that Wizards of the Coast does not endorse the committing of actual crimes in games of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Instead, to commit a crime, all you need to do is cast a spell or use an activated or triggered ability that targets one of the following. An opponent, a spell permanent or ability an opponent controls, or a card in an opponent's graveyard. Payoffs for committing crime are found in all five colours, but are most common in blue and black. 
For example, if you're not afraid of committing a little criminal activity, Seize the Secrets becomes a card advantage connoisseur's dream, while Rattleback Apothecary is your best friend in a race. If we were to list all the crimes available in Thunder Junction, we'd be here longer than a blue-white control mirror. So rest assured that there's plenty of ways to target your opponent, their spells, or their permanents. Plot allows you to pay a cost up front and then cast your spell at any later turn for zero mana. Plotting a card puts it into exile face up for both players to see. Both plotting and casting the card can only be done at sorcery speed, even if you've plotted an instant. So why would you pay now and buy later? Well, it could be as simple as just getting a discount on mana, like paying only 4 mana for your 5 drop. But that doesn't really sound like it's worth the tempo loss, does it? What sounds more appealing is plotting the board pumping stagecoach security so that you can wait for the perfect board state. Or maybe take advantage of easy double spelling on the turn you cast your plotted card so you can get max value from your loan shark. Or maybe you just like making your opponent's life miserable as you plot a Rictus Robber for later. Some cards even trigger when you plot them. Longhorn Sharpshooter gives you two damage and Aloe Alchemist pumps one of your creatures, all while setting up a free play for a later turn. Spree is a new way of playing with modal cards. Each spree card has a base cost in the top right with a little plus sign that indicates you can add some additional costs. Each spree card has two or more of these additional costs that you can pay. You can pay just one of them, or any combination. Take Phantom Interference, for example. This card can be... 3 and a blue, create a 2-2 white spirit creature token with flying. Or 1 and a blue, counter target spell unless its controller pays 2. Or paying both, 4 and a blue, create a 2-2 flying and counter target spell unless your opponent pays 2. However, you must choose at least one mode. You can't cast the spell for just its base mana cost for no effect. And this may actually come up because blue has a casting multiple spells in a turn thing. So no casting phantom interference for just one mana, fellow storm players. A few more rules quirks. You can't choose a mode more than once. Don't be, don't be greedy now. Secondly, spree works a bit like kicker in that the additional costs are, well, just additional costs. They don't add to the card's mana value on the stack. So Phantom Interference always has a mana value of 1, regardless of how many modes you've chosen. And finally, if you are somehow able to cast the Spree card without paying its mana cost, you must still pay its Spree costs. Mount is a new creature type for your trusty steed, which comes with the new ability Saddle. Saddle works a bit like Crew on vehicles, where you tap a certain power worth of creatures to turn it on. A mount is always a creature, but the saddle ability will turn on new abilities. For example, take this chunky lad. Now to mount your giant beaver, to saddle this creature named giant beaver, tap any number of other creatures with total power three or greater. Once you've done so, you can give one of the saddling creatures a plus one plus one counter when the beaver attacks. As with crewing, you can tap creatures that just came into play to pay a saddle cost. However, unlike crewing, saddle costs can only be played at sorcery speed. So this means you can't decide to saddle mid-combat to give your stubborn Barrow Fiend extra stats. Note also that saddle specifies other creatures. A creature can't saddle itself. If they could, they'd have no need for us humans and they'd overthrow us in an instant. Lastly, we have Outlaws which is just a new batching word to capture a couple of different creature types at once. You can remember them with this handy acronym, PRAWN. Pirates, rogues, assassins, warlocks, and mercenaries. Okay, the last one's actually mercenaries, but, but work, work with us here. For example, shoot the sheriff can destroy any non-outlaw creature, while Hellspur Brute costs one less for each outlaw you control which will be enabled by the headline token of this set, one of 30 that are playable in draft, by the way, which is a 1-1 red mercenary creature with tap. Target creature gets plus one plus O until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. That's pretty self-explanatory, but don't try to activate it mid combat. It's sorcery speed only, and don't try to target your opponent's creatures in order to commit a crime. It only targets your stuff. There are 12 commons or uncommons that create these mercenaries, so it won't be that hard to turn on any cards that benefit from having an outlaw in play. 
If you're a true blue-white player, you know the joy of passing the turn without casting a spell. And it becomes even more joyous with either Wrangler of the Damned or Gem Lightfoot Sky Explorer in play, where you get paid with either 2-2 flyers or extra cards for passing the turn. Thankfully, Thunder Junction is loaded with ways to make this easy for you. You can spend your turn plotting a Sheriff of Safe Passage, then on your opponent's turn you can drop a holy cow, and then even sink any spare mana into your Harrier Strix. And if you're a true blue-black player, you know the joy of being an outright criminal. And oh boy, do I have the most beautiful cardboard rectangle Sam has ever seen. Check out Intimidation Campaign. If you were also a fan of Disinformation Campaign and Dovin's Acuity, then you should subscribe now because Sam will never be passing one of these no matter what I say. Yeah, I'm ready for an entire set of Harrier Strix to target the opponent's land, Skullduggery to target their creatures, and Phantom Interference to target their spells. And the best part of all these criminal enterprises is they are common as dirt and just as cheap. So that leaves plenty of time to keep recasting Intimidation Campaign or any of your other proceeds of crime. But if you're not so much the sneaking around kind of criminal and more the just throw dynamite at them type, you're probably more of a Black Red Outlaws kind of crook. You'd probably get along with Vile Smasher, now in Cowboy Cosplay, who commits a crime every time you bring a fellow prawn along, while also reducing the opponent's life total. Vile Smasher enjoys holding people at knife point, which works quite nicely since it gives his whole crew first strike, and all of those crime triggers give you a new mercenary to join your outlaw crew. So stock up on those Nazumi Link Breakers, Blood Hustlers, Dead Eye Duelists, Prickly Pears, and all other gunslinging desperados you can get your dastardly hands on. Red, green, power four or greater is a tried and true limited mechanic, and we've got good reason to believe it's better than ever in Thunder Junction. But that's not because Cactus Folk Shawshot or Jolene Plundering Pugilist are gonna knock your socks off, although I suspect they could. No, the truth is we have the return of Drowsing Pteranodon in the form of Bristlepack Sentry. The whole trick here is gonna be to just pump up the power of the Sentry itself, and start beating down early and hard. And what better way to do that than with the set's ubiquitous mercenary tokens? And that's before we even get started on equipment, plus one plus one counters, or any other tricks. If your trusty steed is your only friend in the world, or if you love your car to a slightly concerning extent, you're probably a green-white soul in Thunder Junction. Like Miriam Herd Whisperer, you will probably be quite pleased to know that you can crew your vehicles and saddle your mounts on your turn with the security of Hexproof, ready for you to start loading plus one plus one counters on them. Both Miriam and Congregation Griff encourage you to load up on as many mounts as possible, which is not as bad as loading up on vehicles since mounts are always perfectly functional creatures on their own. So stock up on those trained Aranxes, rambling possums and bridled bighorns. And of course, you always want as much giant beaver in your life as possible. If you're the sort of person who's willing to throw any one of the gang under the train for a little bit of loot, you're going to enjoy grinding your opponent to sand with white-black attrition sacrifice. Baron Bertram Greywater gives you some extra token fodder to feed into your next scheme, but it's Ruthless Lawbringer that really sells the flavor of black-white. Everything is expendable, so long as you come out ahead. If you enjoyed the Black Red Grindy Sacrifice deck in March of the Machine, this one is probably for you. In fact, Corrupted Conviction is just a straight up reprint and has plenty of fodder in the form of Forsaken Miner, Azumi Link Breaker, and Outlaw Medic. And Ikoria Sacrifice fans might recognize Rakish Crew as a Bastion of Remembrance style win condition. Throw in a Mourner's Surprise or Fake Your Own Death, and you'll be riding that value train right into the sunset. Look, Technically, the black-green archetype for Thunder Junction is called Creatures in Graveyard, but that's more boring than a City Slickers drinking game. Thankfully, we've dived a little deeper and found what black-green is really about. Spider spawning. Well, okay, varmint spawning. Check out Rise of the Varmints. Any fan of Innistrad Draft will attest to the power of spewing out tokens for each gun hand and gutter rat in the bin. And it's not hard to get them in there. In addition to all the black sacrifice effects, you can find free self-mill in Desperate Bloodseeker, 
patient naturalist or consuming ashes. And while you wait to create a voracious volume of varmints, you've got the best grave digger ever printed in Honest Rutstein and a writhing necromass that generates card advantage in Hollow Marauder. What's up, Doc? Oh, nothing much. Just creating the most absurd mana advantage possible for any deck looking to hatch a plot. How do you feel like four mana for free if you've got two cards to plot from your hand? And in case that's not enough, maybe one of those was a slick shot lock picker, aka a snapcaster mage, in which case have another two mana off the spell you cast from your graveyard. And maybe we could splash a little red for some impulse draw effects. You know, the kind on irascible wolverine, gila corsa or outlaw's fury. I've always been of the opinion that efficient card draw plus mana cost reductions is the perfect storm for nonsense. And speaking of storm, Grapeshot fans are going to have a thousand years of fun with blue red in this set. This archetype is all about double spelling as often as possible. If you're able to do that, you can enjoy a fully powered slick sequence, the best electrolyze effect since, well, electrolyze. Stick a crown, violent cacophony, and you'll have a repeating value engine that can also end the game. As if that's something you'd want to do. Blue Red also has the tools to play a tricky tempo game by sticking an early Razzle Dazzler and then keeping the double spells going while still interacting in combat, especially with cards like Take the Fall, Metamorphic Blast, and Discerning Headlock. This will be a deck with a lot of decisions and will reward you for knowing how to pick your moments with your key spells. So, make sure you practice your best smug look to give your hapless foe. And finally, if you don't actually like magic and want it to be over as fast as possible, tough luck! Red White is not actually mega aggro in this set. It definitely still leans aggressive, but Former Posse and Eartha Joe both point towards a slightly longer game version of Red White that leans into maximizing the power of those free mercenary tokens the tap to give something else an extra point of power. So look out for some pretty cool synergies here. Rustler Rampage can untap all your mercenaries, then give the creature they pumped up double strike. Demonic Ruckus can give one big dude evasion and trample, and White brings a whole bunch of cheap creatures with abilities that benefit from greater power, like the double strike on Omen Port Vigilante and Lifelink on Outlaw Medic. Finally, let's take a look at the fixing available on Thunder Junction, because if you've hung around the Draft Punks for any amount of time, you know that we love nothing more than a multicolor pile. And good news, friends, there is more fixing in this set than an underground boxing match. Green gets some absolute bangers, with a Hard Bristle Bandit as a five-color mana door that can be untapped, and Dance of the Tumbleweeds as ramp, fixing, and win condition all in one. But every other colour gets plenty of action too, starting with a full 10 card cycle of dual lands that enter tapped and deal a damage to target opponent. This means you can fix your mana and commit a crime, just in your land slots. These lands appear in the basic land slot of a pack 50% of the time, so expect to have around 12 per draft. But wait, there's more. Mirage Mesa and Conduit Pylons are rainbow lands that don't even require basics in your deck like Evolving Wilds does, and Oasis Gardener is a good defensive mana dork for any deck. Add to that 11 different commons and uncommons that can create treasures, and we've got the makings of a format with plentiful splashing and powerful multicolor builds. Outlaws of Thunder Junction looks like one of the deepest and most interesting limited sets we've had in a long time, and we could not be more excited. As always, our first draft video with the new set will be out the day the set drops on Arena, and we would love to have you as part of our crazy little community over here at the Draft Punks. To join us, all you need to do is remember what to call a werewolf on YouTube. It's a like and subscribe. Hello, Alchemist. Hello, Alchemist. Hello, Alchemist.